trains are loud. But you know what trains aren't? They're not everywhere. There is not a light rail line or streetcar or weird quasi streetcar that goes in front of every business, that goes down every single quiet neighborhood street, and that interrupts every afternoon walk. I can't say the same thing, however, about cars. The entire point of driving a personal automobile around an urbanized area is twofold. You can go fast, and you can park directly at your destination. If either of these things aren't possible, like in downtown where you might have to park and walk, you may as well save your five dollars to $10,000 a year and go ride the bus. This fundamental component of automobility means cars simply must drive down any and every kind of street, big and small. Herein, we find the noise problem. Like most things in life, cars make sounds. However, cars are larger than most things in life. The noises they make are similarly louder. Cars, like their noises, just don't exist on a human scale. Thereby, putting every single person using a street into cars massively increases the amount of noise. And that noise? It's everywhere. On every measurement, metro and light rail trains are louder than your neighborhood gas guzzler. So with the obvious evidence to the contrary, why is this video titled, Trains Aren't Loud? It's because they're not everywhere. Mass transportation, by its very nature, cannot provide the point-to-point -point service, or parking lot to parking lot in some cities, that personal vehicles do. A bus or train must collect riders from a broad area, typically a quarter to half mile radius around stops who are all traveling in the same general direction or to the same major destination, like a ball game. Thus, transit exists in discrete and spaced out corridors. Take this light rail corridor. This major bus corridor. or this through street that happens to have a bus. Big, heavy, and loud transit vehicles fundamentally cannot go down everyone in their dog's side street. You and your dog can enjoy your quiet street, be it for sleeping, walking, or playing, unencumbered by loud and dangerous vehicles of any sort. For all the good that keeping transit on major corridors does, there are still technological problems that can, in some situations, make transit vehicles excessively loud. Fortunately, most of these noise issues can be fixed with actual maintenance. And don't forget we already have noise fencing, and it's not that hard to put up more. Noise pollution is not just about the sounds a single vehicle makes as it passes by you once. It's about where the noisy vehicles are, how often they pass by, and how practical it is to mitigate their noise. All these factors together dictate where a person can go for some simple peace and quiet. Trains and buses put a small number of big, loud, and high-capacity vehicles in specific lively corridors with a solid budget for noise mitigation. Cars put seemingly endless streams of moderately sized, moderately loud vehicles down every single street with few opportunities for noise mitigation. 
Think about which you'd rather have as your community's transportation backbone. Have I mentioned how loud the fancy new concrete pavement is? And don't get me started about living near freeways. So next time you're out and about, keep an ear open to the sounds around you and a mind open to what they could become as our streets are built, rebuilt, and redesigned. Noise pollution is not just about the sounds a single vehicle. Hey look, it's a whole fire truck. Good. We had to carefully pick one of the few places where we could film this voiceover and get good audio. The road news always is too bad at a lot of the other city parks, and apparently it's too bad at this one too, but what you gonna do?